Yes, bicarbonate of soda or baking soda that you have in your kitchen cupboard can actually help sports performance, but it only works for specific events and you can get a really big upset stomach if you take the wrong dosage. So in this video, I'm gonna explain the science behind how it works, also what the best dosage is, what events it's most likely to help for, and how you can combine it with beta alanine for even better effect. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Mareka. I'm one of the physiotherapists from sportsinjuryphysio.com, where you can get online physiotherapy assessment as well as treatment of any type of sports injury, all done via video call. Have a look at the description of this video if you want a link to our website. Also, if you're interested in more injury prevention advice or rehab advice or just things about supplements, we do have a newsletter that we send out on a weekly basis that just has the new content we're publishing in there. If you want to subscribe to that, I've also put a link to that in the description of this video. So how does bicarb do what it does? What's the science behind it? Well, to understand this, we've got to look at the energy systems we use when we exercise. We've got three main energy systems, but the one that's of interest today is the glycolytic system. And this is the one we use when we do short bursts of intense exercise. So really high intensity training up to about 10 minutes that we can sustain it, then we're knackered. During that, that period, the glycolytic system is really, really active and it is very good at producing energy really quickly. But one of the byproducts of that is that it produces lactic acid and lactic acid then accumulates in your muscles and your blood and it kind of acts like a natural break to the body. As the acidity of the muscles go up, they, don't, they, they lose their ability to contract as effectively and you basically get tired, you can't keep on training. So obviously athletes are very interested in understanding how can they reduce this effect that they can go longer at a higher intensity. The theory behind the bicarb is that because bicarb is alkaline, it goes against the acidity, neutralizes it, and your muscles have a chance to perform better for longer. There are two recent review studies that seem to confirm the positive effect of bicarbonate of soda. Now, with a review study that look at all the available research, they take out the, the papers that's not that high quality, and they try to only include the high quality ones. And in the first study, 2020, they included 17 high quality studies and they concluded that yes, bicarbonate of soda does seem to help sports performance for events that uses the anaerobic energy systems most. The ones that uses the aerobic system, so that would be your marathon or longer distances, didn't really seem to benefit, which makes sense because we know that lactic acid is produced at the highest levels and most quickly during those short events that uses the anaerobic system. For the second study, they found similar results. It's a 2021 study, and they identified it helped most for events that lasted between 30 seconds and 12 minutes and was really high intensity. Interestingly enough, this group of researchers also commented that they didn't feel that we can definitively say that all the positive results was down to the bicarb it may also have been down to placebo, some of it. So that's an important thing to keep in mind. If you've ever taken bicarb, you'll know that it can have quite a hectic effect on your stomach. So it's not just about chugging a glass full of the stuff before you go out for exercise, because you'll likely end up having to run for the toilet rather than doing your event. If you're finding this information useful, please remember to hit like and subscribe. It really helps the channel. There are two methods that the scientists identified or used when they looked at the positive effects of bicarb. And I would suggest that you experiment with both and see what works best for your stomach and your body and how you tolerate them. I'm going to explain the amounts of bicarb you take in how much you take per kilogram of body weight, because obviously somebody who's really large needs to take a different dosage to somebody who's really tiny. So keep that in mind. And also, when you look at packaging and things like that, look at the difference between micrograms um, or milligrams and grams, because that makes a big difference to how much you actually take. And it's easy to read it quickly and mistake what you're reading. When we look at single dosage, researchers found that if you take 0.2 grams per kilogram body weight or less, it wasn't really effective. You had to take 0.3 grams at least per kilogram body weight to make it effective. But if you took more than that, it really increased the risk of your stomach, stomach being upset. 
So what this means in practice is that somebody who weighs 75 kilos would take a maximum of 22 grams before they exercise. And the best timing seems to be between about an hour and three hours before exercise. So ideally, you need to experiment with this method and see, okay, if I do take it, if I do get an upset stomach, how long after I've taken it does it kick in? And you either want to give yourself enough time that uh, it happens before your event or that it happens afterwards, but obviously not during. If you want to see examples of products that I think can work from Amazon, I've put links to those in the description of this video as well. The second method is the multi-day method. And the idea here is that you actually do the dosaging before the event and then it doesn't affect your stomach as badly on the day of the event. So with this, you start five to seven days beforehand. You take a bit of a higher dosage. So it's 0 0.4 to 0 0.5 grams per kilogram body weight per day that you take, but you split that dosage because if you take it all in one go, you will definitely have stomach effects. So you split it between in about three or four portions and take it with your food. And then you don't take anything on the day of the event. And with this, you're less likely to have bad effects during the event. Also, just remember, it's easy to think that, ah, oh, I've got bicarb in my kitchen, so it must be a safe substance. I can just take as much as I like for as long as I like. It's never good to mess with your body chemistry over a very long period of time. Stick to the dosages. Don't go overboard. We know that it's safe and okay to take for five to seven days continuously, but you have to have breaks in there. You can't just do it as a normal thing every single day of the week. There's also interesting research that came out to show that if you combine bicarbonate of soda with beta alanine, you can get even a better effect. Beta alanine is an amino acid that naturally occurs in our bodies and it's also been shown effective and safe for athletes to take and it's also not on the banned list so i've made a whole video about beta alanine as well if you're interested in that have a look at the description of this video i'll link to that one there brilliant hope you found that useful remember if you need more help with an injury you're welcome to consult one of the team via video call if you've got any questions ask them in the comments and remember to hit like and subscribe really helps the channel take care